Riots have erupted at anti-immigration protests in towns and cities across Britain in the last week, with attacks by far-right groups on hotels, housing asylum seekers and on mosques. The protests began on July 29th, after three girls, aged six to nine, were killed during a Taylor Swift-themed dance event for children in Southport, Northern England. Eight other children and two adults were injured. A 17-year-old male was arrested and false rumours on social media claimed the suspect was an Islamist migrant, sparking violent anti-Muslim protests the next day and an attempted attack on the town's mosque. The teenager who has been charged with murder and attempted murder was born in Britain and the police are not treating the incident as terrorism. Born to be here because uh, the racists who uh, came out um, in the wake of the Southport uh, uh, murders, they have seized an opportunity to try and attack uh, asylum seekers and refugees across the country and they spread that to a general attack on anybody they perceive to be non-white. The day after the Southport incident, thousands gathered near Starmer's doing street office in central London, resulting in over 100 arrests after clashes with police. Riots have since erupted in more than 20 locations across Britain, including Sutherland, Manchester, Plymouth and Belfast. And our message is to say that everyone together, look, look, look around, there's no trouble, everyone's getting on. Look at all, look at the different complexions of people. All the different religions and, and races, everyone hugging each other, shaking each other's hands, getting given water, do you know what I mean? And this is what this area is about. Other areas, we can't really speak for them, we can't go, but we'll be prepared to help and stop it and not allow these things to happen. What we've done is we've made a stand, not, no violence, all peace made the stand to say, this is what area, our area is about. If you come here, this is what you need to expect and we'll gladly just march it out of the area and put a stop to this. Most protests involved a few hundred people targeting migrants or Muslims. The police vehicles set ablaze and missiles thrown at mosques and officers. Asian-owned businesses were vandalized or looted. Police have arrested around 400 people, with over 120 charged in connection to the riots. Prime Minister Keir Starmer attributed the violence to far-right thuggery. Notable anti-immigration and anti-Muslim figures like Stephen Yaxley Lennon, alias Tommy Robinson, promoted the protests online and are accused of spreading misinformation. Social media firms faced criticism for not curbing disinformation, with algorithms amplifying false messages. To quell the disorder, Prime Minister Keir Starmer announced that the writers will face the full force of the law. Nearly 600 additional prison places are being prepared and specialist officers are being deployed. A 58-year-old man was sentenced to three years for violent disorder, marking one of the first sentences related to the riots. These are criminals, they're thugs, they're not patriots. We've been out doing some um, dawn raids this morning. Uh, the people who were most violent in the Whitehall um, protest and violence last week um, and sort of yesterday, today, it's going to be sort of more than 20 people. About 70% of them have got criminal backgrounds. We've got criminal damage, violence, weapons offences, football banning orders. These are criminal thugs. The government is also targeting those who use social media to incite violence. One man has been charged with using threatening language to steer up racial hatred on Facebook. Science Minister Peter Kyle met with representatives from TikTok, Meta, Google and X to stress their responsibility in preventing the incitement and misinformation. Today we've been working with government, we've had several COBRA meetings this week, so as we as police chiefs across the country have been working together putting these big operations in place to protect communities, um, we've been briefing government on that and they've been putting in plans for other parts of government, local authorities to support us and support communities and I think that teamwork has worked very effectively.